Ready? Ready. Ready. Main engine ignition is three. Join us on a journey through the enigmatic world of black holes, where the boundaries of space and time blur into the unknown. In this video, we delve into the captivating research of Albert Einstein and Stephen Hawking and explore how this cosmic phenomenon, born from the remnants of collapsed stars, challenges our fundamental understanding of the universe. I've got very interested in, in my academic work in, in black holes. And black holes, and they're really evocative things. I think everyone's heard of these strange things, these totally collapsed stars uh, from which nothing apparently can escape. But in the past few years, past few decades really, um, beginning work that Stephen Hawking really began back in the 1970s and many others, um, we've begun to suspect there's a lot more to them. And they've started uh, forcing us to reassess our understanding of what space and time are. And that's a really weird sentence. You might think, well, space is the, the arena in which we live and time just ticks, but it really isn't. It looks like, from studying these things, there are building blocks of space and building blocks of time. The mysterious phenomenon of black holes emerges as a profound consequence of Einstein's theory of relativity. Yet it was Stephen Hawking's groundbreaking revelation that transformed our perception. But what exactly do scientists mean when they talk about black holes? And how does their understanding vary? Well, it's um, in Einstein's theory, which is, again is a remarkable thing. It's published in 1915, over 100 years old. But it's just a region of space from which even light can't escape. Well, so Stephen Hawking, back in the 70s, published a paper um, the, the initial one was called Black Hole Explosions, which is a great title for a paper. Uh, and and it, it, he calculated, he found out that black holes, in his, in his language, he said black holes ain't so black. Like they glow in the sky, like coals in the sky, and they radiate. And so over time, they lose energy and, and, and mass and ultimately disappear over huge timescales. And that's so important. And I, I show this picture in the show that if you go into Westminster Abbey and look on the floor of Westminster Abbey on Stephen's memorial stone, then you find his equation for the temperature of a black hole literally chiselled in stone on the floor of an abbey. So you might say, why? Why is it so important? This was the key. This was this Rosetta Stone idea. As Stephen Hawking explored the mysteries of black holes, his groundbreaking discoveries reshaped our understanding of these cosmic phenomena. Through his revolutionary insights, black holes transformed from being perceived as cosmic voids to dynamic entities that emit radiation and eventually vanish. This paradigm shift sparked a quest to unravel the fate of information consumed by black holes, igniting decades of intense scientific inquiry. In trying to understand what happens what happens? What happens to the stuff that fell in? It, it was, it was it, when you thought these things existed forever, which is pre-Hawking, right? um, then you think, well, it's okay, it gets locked up inside, it can never get out, we don't care. But the thing evaporates away, one day it will be gone. So then suddenly you have to be faced with this question, what happened to everything then? Um, if I throw a book into a black hole, is it somehow possible in the far future, if you collect all this so-called Hawking radiation that comes off, is it possible to reconstruct the information in the book? And that, that's been a, a question, simple question, that's driven this a tremendous amount of research for 50 years. And it was pretty much solved in 2019, actually, in 2020. Pretty much. I mean, it's, there's still a huge number of questions. But roughly, we, well, the, the statement is everything comes out again. All the information comes out. So, so everything that fell in, in principle, in the far future, you could reconstruct the information of everything that fell in. It's, it's an astonishing idea. Because I should, the last thing I'll say is that before that, before the Hawking papers and before this modern understanding, Inside a black hole, just according to Einstein, sits the end of time, which is an astonishing thing to say, because we can see them. We have a photograph of one of these things in the center of a galaxy too, actually. Now. 
And you're looking, when you look at that photograph, you're looking at the end of time in space. So then you think, well, if things go to the end of time, how does everything get out again? Yeah. And that's the content of the, this tremendous work in theoretical physics. As we continue to explore the cosmos, let us remember that the quest for knowledge knows no bounds. Each discovery, each revelation, propels us further on our journey of understanding, reminding us of the boundless wonders that await us in the cosmos. Let the legacy of Hawking's brilliance inspire generations to come, driving us to push the boundaries of human knowledge and delve ever deeper into the mysteries of the universe. <laughs>